It's the Dr. D Show. And welcome to the Dr. D Show. It's the host of the most Dr. D in the building again. And EK. EK, how you doing today, man? Splendid. No uh, greetings? No, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm doing okay, but uh, <laughs> we have to give the greetings. Greetings, people. Uh, greetings? Oh, man, no. It, it did not sound natural like the last no. time that like you normally greetings. do. Greetings. <laughs> there we go. Greetings. So it's a great, it's a great day. Uh, another episode. We have another guest in the building. First female guest ever. Woo! Everybody make some noise. Woo yeah. woo. <laughs> Let's go. Female first... energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our first female guest ever. Uh, her name is Janine Patrick. And uh, she'll be joining us on the show today to talk about several topics. Um, in, in particular, I'll be looking at a few things today because you're the first female guest on the show. So the show might not take his regular route. It might take a different route. It's, it might be a little sporadic. A few questions and curveballs might get thrown at you, but uh, <laughs> I hope you're ready for it, Janine. Uh, All so right, I'm ready. Let's... It's a journey. I'm here for it. <laughs> oh, you ready for it? Oh, I'm ready so for it. <laughs> you, I'd like to introduce uh, Janine Patrick. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. How are you doing? Yes. Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be on your show. I'm feeling fantastic. You know, I got that good energy around me today. So, <laughs> right. I can tell. <laughs> no. Like um, beaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we want to be. That glow. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely. It's you natural. Have... Oh, yeah. That natural essence, right? <laughs> not wait, not until I start asking my questions. Oh, he's mm. questions. Yeah. Watch out for <laughs> Trying him. to bring me down. Oh, no, no, no. Never. We can't, we can't let that happen. So, so Janine, how about you tell us a little about it, you know, a little bit about yourself? Uh, what it is it that you do? I know you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a little bit of research, but uh, just for our listeners that don't know much about you, how about you just give us a quick rundown of your profile and then uh, we can see if we want to swipe left or right. Just <laughs> All right, let me tell you about my uh, highlights here. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Janine. Um, I actually went to school to be a graphic designer. So I do graphic designing and I build websites, but I'm sort of a jacks of all trades type of person. I'm also a wonderful makeup artist and a lash extension artist. So I've always been just like really drawn to different things and I just pick them up and start a whole career or business out of them or just dive deep into topics that I'm like so passionate about. That's definitely something that has always been like super true to me is that I bring so much passion to the things that I care about. And we love that type of energy on this show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's amazing. So so tell us a little bit more about your your graphic design background. How, how long have you been doing that for? Uh, uh, I graduated like, school in like 2016. So I've been a graphic designer for about five years, just a little bit over maybe now. But uh, okay. yeah, it's been like a really interesting experience. I feel like I've got to like work with a lot of different brands and meet a lot of different people and, you know, just spend my energy like very creatively, which is why I wanted to get into the industry in the first place. Like, it's definitely been a space to like help me grow as a person, not just as like a designer. Right. Amazing. A uh, question for you. Yeah. Uh, looks like a shit show, but I have to ask. His face looks like a shit show. How can you make it better? <laughs> My <laughs> Your face looks like a shit show. No, why would you say that? We're supposed to like hype our friends up. Come on. Like, you can so fly. I love Apparently. it. Like, I... oh, a Chris, question. That's all. Apparently. You know what? I'm going to tell yeah. you a secret. Okay. I always feel like I'm more drawn to the way men smell versus the way they look. Ooh. So if you have an ugly face, have right. a good scent. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so are you. Come wait, on. Wait. So are you into the the nice scent or the musky scent? Because mm. if you talk about how man smells, man do tend to have okay, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's you a go. natural smell, but that cosmetic <laughs> smell. <laughs> okay, okay, that's what we're just checking. Because yeah, 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 no, so Give musky right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want you like post gym, but <laughs> maybe like well, post shower. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, like I like clean. <laughs> clean, well, clean is good. Honest question though. Yeah. What inspires you? What inspires me? Mm. Yeah. I feel like a lot of different things inspire me. Like people will inspire me. Just 
the way the world is just curiosity I think inspires me a lot is that like there's so much to discover each and every day like the knowledge of humanity is so minimal compared to the knowledge that's available and just I feel like the fact that all of that is out there all the time waiting for us to come yeah. into that awareness to look at that like isn't that so amazing like it's yeah, awesome it is, every actually. day you can discover something new if you want to well, because when you said that, it picked my interest because mm -hmm. when you're talking about uh, men's scent, yeah, hamburgers or uh, your kind of uh, civet, civet cat kind of person. Wait, so what's the question? <laughs> civet cat or hamburgers? Hamburgers? What's the question? What? <laughs> what? I I'm lost. You oh, threw me off. Me too. too. I'm like simple yeah. burgers and hamburgers. Like, what's happening here? Like <laughs> now I know people don't know their sense. <laughs> I, oh, the, oh, you're talking about cat sense or yeah? Oh, cat I, sense or well scent? I, I have no clue. Cat buddy. sense or well sense? I don't know if I know the difference. Like you're talking to the wrong guy. Oh, jeez. Yeah, like, do I smell good or do I smell bad? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I've got Those this candle. Two. That's my favorite smell. Mahogany tiki wood. Whatever scent family that. Oh, yes. oh, so that's more of hamburgers then for so hamburgers like, okay awesome like no, no it's hamburgers not like hamburgers, hamburgers. oh i see hamburgers oh, okay. yeah mm -hmm. interesting yeah uh, see we just learned something new today yeah cologne connoisseur up in here saying, right um <laughs> right? it's one thing that stood out to me you mentioned earlier you like a jack of all trades and it's funny that you say that because i actually had an episode back earlier when i first started with the podcast and it was called jack of all trades and mm -hmm. the whole conversation about it is like so you know the same jack of all trades master of master none, of none. <laughs> yeah so back in the days i would hear my folks say that to me and mm -hmm. essentially what they were trying to like hammer down in my head was that oh you got to specialize in something but mm -hmm. i was having an argument with ek i was like that makes no sense like in, in today's age i would not want to be specialized in one thing because then i'm just limited I'm just limited to that mm -hmm. one with the way exactly. the and technology and society is moving today. You got to be diverse. You have to have a diverse <laughs> portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, what is your take on being a jack of all trades? And, and do you prefer to be a jack of all trades? Or are you actually eventually looking at specializing in something and just, you know, mm -hmm. narrowing your options down? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, I can definitely understand why people say like jack of all trades, master of none, and like why that's so important because really like it's saying to me, you know, like maybe the focus isn't as clear. Like if you're a master of none, you're not focused on one thing, you're focused on all of these things. Like you're giving your energy to all of those things. And it's hard because there's a society before us that got a job and worked that job, you know, their whole lives and retired and that was it, you know, like you had one thing, but now we live in a culture where we're like constantly bombarded with all the stuff that we could be. So like, we're just naturally going to be drawn to more things. So I don't know if I believe that it's better or not to be like a jack of all trades. Like there are situations like, Hey, do I want my doctor to be a jack of all trades? And like, you know, just do a little bit of surgery here and just like play this thing over here and like do that thing over there. Maybe not. Maybe I don't want that from somebody like that, but you, you know, know what's like, funny? It's funny you say that, but in society <laughs> today, you will actually find professionals that yeah. are or trades. Like I know a guy, he's like a he's like a cybersecurity analyst, mm -hmm. right? He's like he deals with like corporations and help protect like their database systems and all that stuff. But he's also a DJ. So you catch this guy at a club Ooh, okay. <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> so like, like bumping it up. Right? So it's like, you never know. Your doctor might be your doctor and performing a surgery. And then you, at the end yeah. of the day, he's... They might be a DJ as well. To... They might be kicking it <laughs> at the crib, you know? Like, who knows? Oh, question for you. Question for you. Uh, what does that do? What's that? What does your dad do? What does that do? What does your dad do? Or her dad? Yeah. My dad, uh, my both my dad and my stepmom both work for uh, a factory. I'm from like a small town, uh, right. Stratford, Ontario, and a uh, big like factory city. Oh, so. okay. Mm -hmm. oh, so what do, what what do they do there? Factory. Um, I think my dad's like a overseer of things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so there you go. He's a, he's a boss. Then, he's, a, right? he's a jack of all trades. Then. <laughs> yeah. 
here's the thing though everybody i think is a jack of all trades like a little bit right like even outside right. of your career you've got passions like you have hobbies you have interests like you're always dabbling in a little bit of everything i guess it depends if like you're a jack of all trade in your career or if you're just a jack of all trade in life because i don't right. think there's anything wrong with being a jack of all trade in life you like be you a should jack be. of all trades in a career how, how would that play off sure you could like okay so like let's take my job for example like i could be a graphic designer and a marketer and a social media director and a videographer like those things sort of align more well together but like i could do really? all those things that could be one job i'd probably burn out very quickly but <laughs> yeah. it's possible <laughs> like you know right that's amazing Right? That's, that's interesting but yeah you you do have a great point i think we all have a little bit of a jack of all trades in us uh whether we want to accept it or not but i i mm. think in this day and age it is necessary for us for, for us to have that it's, it's definitely mm. important um another thing i want to talk to you about today somebody we we, we had this conversation and I, i've always wanted to get a few more perspective on this <laughs> one okay cancel culture Cancel culture. Oh, I guess. Are goodness. you pro cancel culture or? She knows about it. Against cancel culture. And what is your take on cancel culture? Yeah, I mean, it's something, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, enough said. <laughs> no, I love kidding. the hesitation um, there. <laughs> <laughs> where you like choose your words carefully. Right. Um, <laughs> this is where we all get canceled. <laughs> Pretty much, right? It might be the last time you hear yeah. of this show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, um, I'm definitely not pro cancel culture. I think that it's actually stemming from like a pretty toxic place in society. Um, for me, like cancel culture is really just like so layered, like there's so many things happening. It's not just like somebody does something and then we cancel them, right? Like somebody does right. something that we don't like, and then we can't sit with that discomfort. So we think that shaming them and canceling them is like the best approach. Like you've done something wrong. So now I'm not going to see your perspective. I'm not going to hear you out. I'm just going to shame you, tell you what you've done is wrong. And that's it. Like you're gone. Like I'm just going to ghost you and never think about you again. And like that's that would not depend really... on. I, I think it would depend on what you've done, right? Because if you're looking like, Here's you're looking the thing, like, folk, like uh, Jeffrey Epstein and uh, those kind of dudes, uh, mm -hmm. But then we could, yeah, we could just like not align with that person anymore. Like we don't have to follow those people and be like, oh, like claps for them. Like they did such wonderful things. Obviously they did not. And that's right. the thing. Aren't you, aren't you shaming at the same time? What, but shame? it's different between shaming is like oh. what you've done is wrong. And I'm never, ever going to look or talk to you again versus like, I believe oh. in this type of way. And you're just not aligned with that. So I'm actually just moving towards people who I'm more aligned with. Right. Okay. Fair enough. I think it's just the mentality behind it for me that like feels different. Like shaming is like you're just so bad and wrong. And like people's actions can be bad without us like shaming them. Like we don't make the space for anyone to ever learn and like reflect because we just make that person so bad that then they're just going to be defensive and be like, I didn't do that. Like I did right. nothing wrong. Like, and then it's just a battle of like, oh yeah, but you said this about that person. And oh yeah, but I was so justified. Like right. it's not, okay. Like, like where's you, the space? A good point in that. And like, I looked at the Kevin Hart situation, for example, when uh, he was supposed to host the Oscars and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they pull out a tweet from like some odd years ago uh, that he made some homophobic yeah. remarks. I'm like, for starters, he's a comedian. And like, he's going to make some remarks that's not going to sit well mm -hmm. with everyone. Like, get over it, you know? Uh, and then you use that against him and try to like essentially ruin the man's career, which yeah. didn't really sit well with me because then people were like, oh yeah, cancel him, skip his, don't watch his movies, don't do this. I'm like, what? Really? Because but he made a. Oh, he said good. one thing. Yeah. Like, here's hey. the thing. We don't have to agree that that's right. We don't have to be like, oh, good for you for saying that. We can still be like, yeah, I wasn't down for the fact that you said this. This is 2021. We don't operate that way, but you're still right. funny. I still like your movies. I'm not going to like be like, you're the worst. Never again. Like, bye bye. Like, right. Like, oh, but, is he oh, still oh, that oh. person? Oh, well, let's look at Epstein. Epstein. For example, okay. it's a little bit different because, like, that but guy, he did some crazy well, things. So, we're uh, still saying 
platform. It's yeah. not not the same platform. No, the same platform is just it's, no, 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 just no. We just gotta, uh, all different. I'm saying is like, let's make it less black and white. Like, let's make it more gray. Like, there obviously there are people who are doing things that we don't agree with. That we're saying, hey, that's not gonna fly here. Like, let's tr- draw attention to it. But drawing right. attention to it is different than like canceling them and right. ghosting that person and basically. Them like jobless. ostracizing them. Yeah, yeah it's not the them jobless they can't take care of themselves or their families i I don't know i don't don't even think it has the effect that people want it to i think that all it does is bring more attention to that person versus less but the thing is but the thing is if you're if if you're trying not to listen to one person and you're trying to listen to another person (laughs) then what am i doing somebody else's opinion is better than somebody else's no i don't know it's it's uh it's it's Epstein is a different situation, no, man. He is taking just, advantage. Just, He's taking like, advantage of people. Like, fine, you can you can. I think for him, he's more of bringing to light what he was doing, so that there could be a legal consequence to his actions, versus saying canceling him. Because again, once there's a legal consequence to his actions, he goes to jail automatically. He's going to fill it in his pocket. But the thing is, it's gonna, gonna hurt him. Different perspectives from what from perspective are you no, talking about? No, you're trying to look at things from you make no side. sense. This <laughs> man was gonna <laughs> all all the women to recruit freaking younger girls for rich people okay, to get molested fine, and fine. used. He was doing what shit. argument are you making? He was doing here? shit. He was doing shit. We know that he was doing shit. Okay, so then what? He was doing shit. We should we should so, buy all his 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 merchandise. No, no, we should patronize his restaurants. A good time with what other people are saying. What do you no. mean? You should have a good time with what people are saying. Everybody else is saying. No, okay. not what everyone is saying. Is what he did. We all know he did it. Yeah, why he you did it. Yeah. Why did he off himself if he didn't do no, it? No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> why did he off himself if he didn't do it? He was going to snitch on a bunch of people. <laughs> What's your perspective? <laughs> the other thing, yeah, what just comes up for me is like, even though I agree that what he did is wrong and I think that he should be, you know, punished for those crimes, I think that when we're just like closing the door on him, we're closing the door on like any conversation about him. Like we're closing the opportunity to learn from his mistakes. We're closing the opportunity to try to understand why someone would do something like that. Like actually connect to another human being. Like I don't have to agree that what he did is okay to try to understand him. Cause like that feels to me like that comes from like a sad place for him that you're going right. to violate people, that that's the space that you're in, that you're going to do that. Like, that doesn't sound like a happy, great, loving person who's having a great life. Like it no, might look I, good I on paper, but <laughs> mentally, like what's going on for them? Like if we right. guess, I, cancel and I agree him, with you. we can't talk about it. Right. You, I completely agree with you because for someone like that, you want to get down into this. Like you want to understand what makes them tick and how they got to that point mm-hmm. where they are. And maybe if you can understand that, then it helps you to better recognize people that have those traits early and you can put a stop mm-hmm. to these type of things. Like look at our Kelly, for example, man, man, that mm-hmm. dude went on for years and nobody said anything. All the victims were, you know, looked at as they were the bad ones. Yeah. Only, and if someone had actually taken the time and evaluated this man's psychic or psychology and see how this man operates, maybe they would have figured out that, Hey, maybe there's something wrong with this guy. <laughs> you know maybe what, we can what stop is, what, what is, we can what, just have that awareness of like hey that seems something like something's up here like hey you know why are people doing these things like just even if we don't always get answers like just posing the question like giving your mind the space to be like hmm, i wonder why that happened right. versus just like you're wrong and that's it like we're done like that's so much different than like i just don't agree and i wonder why you're doing those things you know like it's just so much more gray like we need to start living in a gray space and not like it's wrong or it's right. That's very true. And so with cancel culture, I personally, in my opinion, I think it hurts guys more than women. You think What's so? You think on that? Hmm. Yeah. Can you give me an example of why you feel that way? Just because all the cases we hear has been involved men. You barely hmm. hear stuff involving women. Like, okay, fine. The only thing you hear involving women was like <laughs> uh, women paying schools for their kids to get degrees and whatever. And then they do like true, a fake jail time. And everyone is still watching their movies and all that stuff. No, and no one gets canceled. But if it was a dude, then it's like, oh, let's boycott him. Let's do this. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, I hear you Look saying. at Charlie Sheen, for example, with his old mm. winning nonsense. 
they they boycott that guy so hard like it was, it was hard for him to find a job for like a minute right so it's kind of like personally with all the cases that i've heard it seems to be mm-hmm. the guy the ones getting the brunt of this cancel culture and the ladies are just having a joy ride if <laughs> <laughs> words <laughs> yeah um i can definitely hear your perspective on that um I can't say if it's more leaning, um, but what I will say is I feel like right now, society is just especially sensitive to men. Like we just always swing in pendulums, you know, like we had like a very male dominated space and we wanted to move away from that. So we're like pro-feminism, pro-female, which like, you know, here for that. But it's just, right. I think that there's so much like trauma that's like happened and like upset feelings that like it actually were like projecting a lot of that onto men not to say that they're not doing things that again I I don't agree with but I definitely think like we're our tolerance for men is lower right now just because of all these other layered feelings why is that that come into that why is that why do you think um I think it's hard to say because I don't want to speak for all women and it hasn't been my experience but i think that women do feel like very treated differently than men treated differently in society like almost like lesser than again not everyone's gonna say that that's true just some people have said to me hey you know like they don't feel like equals and then there's like this animosity almost now all of a sudden and like anytime you're bringing like these layers of animosity like I'm just gonna naturally be more sensitive to you because I'm holding all this resentment against you question for you right yeah question for you in your case, like in your personal space, what are you at? What 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 do you feel like? In terms of, she knows. <laughs> in terms of this question, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that it's been different for me. I have not felt as disrespected as some women who have spoken to me. You know, like I've had men do some shady things to me that I wish they didn't do, but again like it's just trying to have a different perspective I think that my reflecting on my time has just made me feel differently I don't want to go out there and be a man hater like nothing against men like we're all equal so like let's act like it you know but not everybody feels that way not everyone's bringing that energy right now a lot of us are still like in our feelings feeling upset about stuff and you know we really have to like start working and looking at that stuff so that we can move through it and stop putting it on other people you know like as a woman, I'm going to treat men responsibly. I'm going to treat women responsibly. I'm going to treat other people responsibly. As a man, treat me responsibly. Treat other people responsibly. Like, if we all just do that thing, then there shouldn't be this problem. But we're putting it on everybody else to be like, show up for me and be the man who's like strong and cares about all these women's issues. And like, I'm not going to do anything unless you do something for me. Like, well, that's not good culture. Like, Okay. The reason why I ask that question is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is my ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Right, face value. I think you're a strong person, Thank awesome you. person, <laughs> and the shit. But yeah, it's just my perception. Mm-hmm. Tell me. I ask myself a question: How okay. many people have that perception of you when they see you face value? The perception of like to treat me like with respect, or to see me as like a strong person, like treat me with respect you like this is what you deserve this is the person that i'm dealing with this is the mm-hmm. person is on this pedestal yeah some people don't treat me with respect some people disrespect me all the time and i always look at that and be like why would you want to treat people that way but then i also am reminded that sometimes i'm in a bad space and i'm not treating people well you know like sometimes i just take it more the grain of salt it's not always about me like I just try to do my best to treat that person with respect and show them how I want to be treated. And then if you're not showing up that way, then that's for you to look at, honey. Like ain't nothing to do with me, you know, like not everyone's holding my persona. A lot of people are out there in it for themselves. And here's the thing, everything you're putting out into the world, you're going to get back. So if you're out for yourself, you're just going to be in conflict with people who are also out for themselves. If we're out for each other and we're out to treat each other with respect, that's going to come back to you. And if it doesn't, then you got to look at that and be like, I'm okay with not everybody. This well, is my standard, and I don't have to be in pe- uh, relationship with people who don't treat me that way. But I also am not going out being the queen of Shiva and saying, demanding everybody treat me like this because you're just not going to get that. Right. Guess what? <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. 
not that a lucky answer, but uh, your answer is okay. <laughs> your answer is okay. <laughs> You're not here for it. I mean, hey, um, it's okay. We don't have to agree. That's the other thing. Uh, it's like nah, we're so awesome. stuck in agreeing something. Uh, your answer is awesome. Your answer is awesome. Just <laughs> your answer is awesome. Just have to take you down a notch. Um, <laughs> Bring that energy uh, down. <laughs> so Go. I want to get into relationships. Yeah. I want to talk about guys and girls dating. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you seeing anyone? I know it's not in my business or anything. Are you seeing yeah. anyone? What was the dating like for you during the pandemic? Did, were you single then or were you already involved? Or, or if you had girlfriends, mm-hmm. that way, what was that like for them dating in the pandemic? Yeah. Um, so I actually was dating during the pandemic, you know, like uh, apps and whatnot. Apps. You know? Hey, that's <laughs> all you had. What else did you That's have? all you got. We all, and that's all we so have. Yeah, tough yeah. <laughs> my, my fingers got after a while, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I met a lot of like very odd people. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, like <laughs> lovely people too. Like I'd meet people who were just like very nice, who you know who seemed nice, and then I would like meet someone, like go for dinner with them, and then they'd be like, "Hey, you want to come over and like do drugs next weekend?" I'm like, what about our time together? Gave you the impression that I had like love to do drugs with you. Like, like, I, it's maybe so it's your like, energy. Maybe it's know, your high like, energy. They're like, oh, she must be on something. You know, something. I want to get on her level. Yeah, I'm like naturally high, you know. It, it, it's funny that you say that because earlier in the in the pandemic, I I did meet a few interesting women, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I'll say y'all women, uh, y'all women are something else. That's all I'm going to say. I, I, I'm going to leave it at that. I, I, you know I what? No, oh, true story. I had this lady, like, send me, like, close to, like, nudes and whatever. It's, it's easy. In, oh, wow. in the attempt. Jesus. Yeah, but, and this was, like, right off the bat from, like, talking, like, maybe a couple of days. But mm-hmm. it was all in the guise to try and get me to come help her to move. Wow, yeah. women just yeah. out here like looking for movers. Like I've never thought about that before. <laughs> right, like, and she's looking to get me to come out there and help her move for free. And I was like, really? Like, this is a thing. Like, you just send news and get free movers. Like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know if I would go for that, but I'm in a little bit of a different boat, so I don't know that. Uh... Like, what is up with ladies nowadays and with the trickery, though? Like, I, 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 I... it's all you. It's all you. <sighs> okay, yeah. I, I really hear this, and you know what? I have um like some lashing clients, and I was talking to one of them about it, and she said like, I just have to play games because if I don't, I'm gonna get played. Like, play or be wow. played, you know. Really? That's the mentality going on. I was just looking at her like baffled. Why is that though? That's that that sounds like this is the it, mentality that's going on. It's like so many men are playing games with women that now women are doing the same thing in return. Like, I'm gonna give you a taste of your own medicine, but here's the thing: you're just perpetuating that toxicity then. Right. But are the men playing games with women intentionally? Or are they doing it for a reason? Is it because women have maybe in the past made themselves not seem serious enough that guys were not taking them serious and then I, yeah, I don't know chicken or egg chicken or egg what caused the toxicity i don't know i just see two people playing a game and i'm like hmm we want the game to end stop playing right like, if you don't want to play the game and you don't want to get played then don't play the game at all because everything right. you give out is going to come right back to you Right, and I just right. try to live my life more by that philosophy. So, like, I would never play games with the guy. I would just tell him straight up, like, "Hey, I'm not feeling you." Like, you know, like maybe we're not aligned. So, wish right. you the best. <laughs> like, oh, don't get me started with that word, aligned. Oh, no, no, aligned. Oh. Aligned. Oh, no, you don't like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. How do you no, 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 align no. somebody? Please, I, I, I need to understand this. So, please. It'll, it'll yeah, I feel like it is just one of those like buzzwords. Up- forms now, you know that, right? Uh, Using that word align. Please, please do. <laughs> How do you align with someone? I've heard that word before. So, and the reason yeah. I say this is like I dated a girl once, and literally to me, I felt like everything was going great. You know, we mm-hmm. had good times, laughs, enjoyed our company, hung out, did things together. Like, rarely do we like fight. Like, yes, yeah, she got mad about a few things here and there, but it was like stuff that like we could talk about. And then one day she's like, oh, we're not compatible. I'm like, what the- mm, okay. 
like we're not aligned. I'm like, what, what does that mean? So I'm like, so yeah. we talk about like, our goals and things like that. And to me, I felt like not our English, goals were similar. Not English, not English. And I just couldn't get it. It, it. it threw me off. So what is it that women want? Like, I don't get it. You find a good guy in a relationship and then you just blow him off because you're not compatible what what is that about pause for intermission i've been listening to some interesting podcasts igtv guys recently mm-hmm. and they've been talking about how the modern women are or think or act like they're entitled mm. and because entitlement is the reason why a lot of modern women can't seem to hold down a relationship and i was thinking about it saying hmm these guys have a point but wait before you eat me up <laughs> wait chew me up and spit me out like <laughs> um he said something interesting that stood out to me and it was like men like peace and if they are in a relationship with a woman where they feel like they cannot have peace most likely that's going to not work so what is it modern women today and the need for not having peace or the need to be entitled or the need to be in control or to be in charge what's up with that well i mean i want to challenge a couple of things here of course so I mean, do men really want peace because i see a lot of men wanting the crazy so <laughs> for starters that brings a lot of energy to you if you want the crazy ask yourself why you're getting the crazy right we're just gonna leave that one there um do i think women are entitled i mean i don't know i've seen some women act in ways i just i would never act i don't know where that's coming from or it does sort of like strike you i guess it's like very entitled just um i can't say why i i think that there's like this uh, energy going on right now in the world where women just want to like feel powerful you know we want to feel confident feel we want empowered wanna... Yeah, right. But I think like we're confusing empowered and like feeling powerful with being entitled, like wanting a bunch of stuff and acting as if you're like this princess type of person doesn't really make you powerful. It just makes you look bad. Like it doesn't really like that's not a confident, strong woman. Like we're not looking at that woman and going, wow, what a badass. Like Right. I see women who go out there and kill it who would never like act that way, like have so much like inner peace and like. I think there's just like this misconception on what that looks like. We really want to be empowered. We really want to feel that way. But I guess like maybe there isn't like enough role models for people. Like we just see like our social media, all these people like just being like, you know, very money oriented, very like things oriented. And like these people are like our, our icons for like boss ass women, but like that's not what makes them boss. Like they just happen to do those things with some of their boss energy. So like, I just think like the way we're looking up to people and looking at our idols, we're just taking away these like very superficial things and expecting to feel better about ourselves. Cause what we're actually seeking is like this good feeling. Like I'm strong. I'm a bad bitch. Like I'm going to go kill the day. Like I don't need a Mercedes to do that. You know, like my Honda give me their fine. (laughs) You know? Yeah. So, so this, so this whole notion of being strong and independent is—is is it really helping women today in relationships, or is, is it hurting them more? Like, what, what do you think? I personally think it, it is hurting women just because I find that women that tend to be strong and independent or think they are strong and independent tend to st- overstep their boundary. When I say overstep the boundary, they start to encroach on the male role. So things that a man would do or would be responsible for, they want to start taking on those roles, which kind of like devalues the, 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 the devalues the man. Like what is a man supposed to do now if the woman is taking on, on these type of manly roles? So it's kind of like, okay, the man does not want to feel less of a man (laughs) because you want to gain your independence. (laughs) There's so much like going on here, like so many feelings, like, Right. We have to even be trapped and defined to these like gender roles. Like all that matters in a relationship is that each person brings something. Like you can't be in a relationship where one person brings all the things and one person's the freeloader. Because what's going to happen? The person doing all the things is going to be like, why are you freeloading? Right. right. Like, it can't be that way. Like there needs to be 
some equality. It just, equality doesn't have to look like I'm the woman. So I do these things and I'm the man. So I do these things. Like, what are you good at? What do you like doing? You know, like, what do you feel like is your values that you want to bring here? Like, as long as we have a discussion and say like, Hey, I'm going to do this. So what are you willing to do? Then right. we're going to find that like, we can both be independent. We can both feel strong. We can both feel powerful without that like encroaching feeling. But like, what's happening is like, we get like really stuck, I think, in like the roles that we don't want to be in or the roles that we're in. And then we start like feeling shitty about ourselves because then we're like, we're not enough now because we're not doing the things or like we want too much stuff that's from like the wrong kind of place. And then it just, it's not, it's too black and white. Like I either have to be this way or I can't be this way. Like, where's the gray? Like, why can't I like feel strong and powerful and independent? Why can't you feel strong and powerful and independent? Why can't we feel that way together? Well, because Amanda told you you can handle X, Y, and Z. Well, because a man will... Uh, because Amanda told you you can handle X, Y, and Z this way. Right. So do with it. Yeah, but... Okay, so if he can handle X, Y, and Z, then I have to decide if I'm okay with that. And if I'm not, then maybe we're, we either need to figure out a way to compromise, so, a way to okay. adapt, or we're not yeah. compatible. So there's my question. Why is it that you have to decide if you're okay with it or not? So, so this is where I'm coming on from. Both sides. Yeah, this is where I'm coming from. I'm coming from in the sense of a man is supposed to be looked at as the head of the home, the provider, the protector. Okay. Typically, a woman is more of the supporting. So she supports the man. She plays more of a homemaker. She brings mm-hmm. the kids up to the age where the man now takes over and says, okay, now your mom has nurtured you and, sh- and brought you up and, and made you healthy and showed you uh, the basics of life. Now I'm going to show you as a man how to navigate in life, how to, the things you should look for in life and the things you look for in relationships in, 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 in men and women. Um, why is it that women now for some reason they think that okay if a man is trying to act out his role they have to be okay with it first it's just hard when you're describing that way because like can't women bring that same type of energy to that role like let's just flip the roles let's make the man the stay at home and the women the one that goes out into the workplace you don't think that she has like experience to teach we're not saying she doesn't have an experience to teach, but by nature, that's it's, what it isn't by nature, though. Is it, it is by, by nature. society. Like we no. created these roles. Like <laughs> it is by nature. By nature, a man is the guy man. who out who hunts, who gathers, who brings home for the family, provides and protects. That is our natural given ability. But the problem that I'm finding is that mm-hmm. there's a lot of women now in their soul in the so-called uh, uh, um, journey in search of independence, that they are starting to want to take on some of these roles mm-hmm. are typically known to be male roles. And it creates yeah. a conflict in relationships because then if a man says, oh, I, I should be doing this, the woman's like, oh, why should you be doing that? You, you don't think I can do it? No, it's not that we're not saying you don't think you can do it. We know you can do it, but we don't want you to do it because that's what we should be doing. But we're hearing, I'm hearing a lot of like, should be doing, like, should you be doing that? Or shouldn't you be doing that? Like, who's to say what you should and shouldn't do? Like, we live in 2021, like, we're not hunters and gatherers anymore. We don't have to operate that way. That's why it feels like more society, (laughs) like it is like, we don't have to have gender roles, because we're not out in the forest, where like, we need your endurance, because you're a man and your body's built this way. Like, we just don't need that. So it just comes. The role is important. I don't know that I think so. I mean, maybe to here's the thing. It depends on what you believe. If you want to be in a dynamic where the man's the head of the household and the women's a supporter, then you need to be with a partner who values that. Because if you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't value that and that's what you're wanting, you're just never, ever going to come to the same place because you want that person to be a person that they're not going to be. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that dynamic. If that dynamic makes you happy, great. Go on, live your happy life. But it wouldn't be for me. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, there are some things I like, of course, if you're my partner and you say to me, like, this is what I want to bring to the relationship because it matters to me and it makes me feel fulfilled, then great. You bring that to the relationship. Okay. Or like, maybe we both bring in, we take turns, you know, like, 
why is it the black and white? Like you're either this or you're that. Like right. again, all I can do it another day. You kind of bring stuff. That's 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 interesting conversation though. Like um, I, I could go on about this for a while. <laughs> you, to be honest with you, um, just just talking about <laughs> just talking about the 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 modern the modern woman and 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 the relationships. Like how is it that we as men and women can get along better because i i feel like there's such a huge Mm, there is a very big disconnect isn't there a huge disconnect in what women want or looking for and what men are looking for in women that Mm. i think that that is causing relationships not to essentially um work out long as they should Mm -hmm. just give me a second there's such a huge uh there's such a huge disconnect between what women want and men, what men want. And how is it that we can find or start to bridge that gap? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's tough. Like I'll tell you like dating today is like, it's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <It's>, I know. <laughs> I've like crazy. heard so many war stories where I'm like, what, why is that person doing those things? Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's, a lot of things that we could be doing to try to just like relate more to each other. But I think one of the biggest things is that we need to start coming from more like honest and like vulnerable places and really start doing more reflective work. Because for me, what I find is that people just avoid doing the self-work and then they end up in relationship, which is when your self-work is kind of like the most triggered. And then we you know, we are so disconnected already. And then we're trying to navigate this like other thing of being so disconnected. So I think just like really focusing on yourself for a little while and like making sure you understand what your values are, making sure you understand, you know, what type of energy and person you want to be, and then going out and being that person and being open and uh, responsive enough so that when other people show up as themselves, that we can sort of have like more of a dialogue, like, I can't possibly fathom what it's like to be a man, but I can sit here and listen. I can sit here and try to understand. I can sit here and not judge you like, and make you wrong about something. I just be like, Oh, you're well, you're this way. Like now I'm deciding how you are versus just like, Hey, like, let me get to know you. Like, let me ask you questions that, you know, are based around like what I actually want to know about you. So that when we're dating, it's not just like this. Oh, what do you do? Oh, what do you do for fun? Like that's so surface like talk about people from a real place and right. there won't be so like all this extra like crap that we're doing with dating because we'll just be more honest like you'll have your first date you'll find out information and you'll be like okay actually I do want to go on that because this reason not because like they were so attractive or you mm-hmm. know that date was so fun like what type of person were they you know, right. how did I connect to them how did I feel connected to them do I know anything about them like what can I remember about them now right And it's more of like, I feel like we just focus on things that don't matter at the end of the day that are just so surface. And then we're asking ourselves, like, why are we so disconnected? Like, well, we're disconnected because we don't ask any questions that would connect us. We don't open ourselves up to be connected. Like, we just talk about random things that don't really matter to us. Matter, right, right. I want to get into the nitty gritty. Like, what are your long term goals? What you see yourself here? What are your plans for? Yeah. you see yourself having a family you want one Mm -hmm. kid it's like you know uh, how would you raise those kids you know what belief systems have been really important to you you know how do you think uh those deep how do you think that you should treat people yeah we're not having those deep conversations and you you got a great point there i think we should be having more of those uh deep conversations but the question is are we all ready to have those deep conversations I don't know. I think that's like person to person. Here's the thing. Are you ready to have those deep conversations with yourself? Because if you're not, then you're not ready to be in relationship with another person because you're only going to meet a person at the depth that you're at. So if you're a surface person, you're going to meet somebody else surface. You're not going to be able to dive in deep. It's going to be hard. It's going to be this like disconnect again of like this one person's here and I'm all the way over here and who bridges the gap now, right? Like we all just got to keep working on ourselves and trying to understand like Let's get ask. curious. Oh, just, yeah. Have a with her, if you don't mind. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> That's a question, man. Okay. Side conversation. I want to have a conversation with her. <laughs> it's a podcast, buddy. <laughs> you can talk. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
welcome so, welcome to the podcast right yeah. <laughs> take a mic <laughs> like i wasn't there before jeez <laughs> how you doing welcome <laughs> no, I'm just awesome. how, how are you doing <laughs> i'm feeling good <laughs> you're feeling good i'm not asking how you're feeling good it's just how are you doing how am i doing yeah. hmm. i guess that's different than how i'm feeling no i asked how you're doing yeah it's different from how she's feeling yeah that's yeah yeah that's what she said. Um, <laughs> Can we have a conversation with her? <laughs> I'm doing. Um, I don't even know if I can find the word. Okay, so before I'm you doing do... the work. That's what I feel like I'm doing. <laughs> okay, okay, before you would say what you have to say, it's sort of on a bad platform for my sake. It's just yeah, I was just trying to find out more about you, and that's the same cause with that ha- we we had actually. We're trying to find out more about you. Hmm. So that and, disconnect there. Yeah, a big disconnect. Hmm. And, but then I guess it's like uh, the way we're having I, questions. <laughs> oh, could I start, before you say something else, it was my progression that I was trying to say, okay, I think she's thinking this, I think she's thinking this. So I was trying to kind of guide the conversation. Mm. But that's, isn't that interesting? Because you're trying to decide what I'm thinking and how I feel. That's the But, that, but that's not up to you, though. It's not up to me if he does that or not, but isn't it fascinating that we're no, like I mean, doing yeah. But I mean, like, it's not up to him yeah. to what you think, you know, how you feel, right? But the thing but that's is, that's a great thing is that then you came in and asked me that question. So you could, like, kind of try to actually see if the way that you're interpreting everything is, like, but the thing is, my, correct, I suppose. My, my thing was, oh, I'm trying to get a conversation because for me to be comfortable as I mm-hmm. am, the person that I am is just let's get the conversation to you and uh, kind of see where it goes to. Oh, yeah. And on that on that part, absolutely, I was wrong. I know it. <laughs> I don't like to admit that I was wrong. But yeah, I was just different. Let's call it different. Yeah, why was it wrong? I guess it was just different. It was just different. It's just, but I was trying to find out more about you. I'm trying That's to find awesome. out. About, yeah, I'm trying to find out about the conversation we can have. Mm, and between us. How can I find out what this person is thinking? What, 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 what their well, mind is? You just got to ask questions, man. Yeah, just, gonna ask just the right accessing questions. the curiosity, you know, like. Well, the, but the thing right is, now, you know? I I can ask you twenty million questions. Mm, I can it, ask you twenty. Million, it's, it's asking the, the right, right questions. It's asking the right questions. Yeah, mm. it's asking the right questions and then yeah. listening and yeah. hearing and like actually, not just listening to respond, but listening to understand. Okay? Right. I feel like all the time, myself included, like we're talking and then I'm listening to you and I'm formulating my response. So like, how much am I listening if I'm thinking about what I'm going to say? Well, I ask for the response. Right. Half the time it's just, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm asking for a response, but half the time it's just, oh, I don't like that response. So yeah, maybe that's wrong. So You don't like the response. It, yeah, maybe it's, it's my problem, that one. Well, but it's just. See, and that's why I, I always look at, if you're going to be into, into making interpretations of what people are saying, you always mm-hmm. want to not look at the negative first. You want to look at a negative interpretation and a positive interpretation. Because you can ne- just assume that, yes, this person meant this and then react based on what you assume. Mm-hmm. You want to give a benefit of a doubt that, okay, maybe this is what I understood, but maybe they possibly meant something else. And that's where asking the right question. And when I say the right question, I don't mean like you have to use the right words, but you have to be precise with your ask. Or so just got- reconfirm what you're, you think right. you're hearing. Like, so like if I what think I'm I hearing- heard you say something, so I could be like, hey, this right. is what I think I thought I heard. Is this what you're saying? Is this what Same, you meant? Correct, like, exactly. Now we can just like talk about it. I could be like, oh yeah, I totally meant it that way or no, not at all. You know, problem, way, way a lot of people get to that stage. Though. A lot of people just react mm-hmm. right off the bat. But we're and- all doing that all the time, right? That's like, that's even prominent in like cancel culture. We're just reacting to somebody, right. deciding they're this way or that way and then making a responsive uh, action based off of that without, you know, real thought. Like, right. why do I feel this way? Why do I even feel so intensely towards you about what you're saying? Like, what what about me is being stirred up? Like, right. you no, know, people don't make us anything. We feel ways about things uh, about uh, Sorry, we feel ways about the things that people do. Like, right. You don't make me angry. I feel angry at you. Right. You know, I like, agree with you. So That's we just got to like stop, start touching base and be like, hey, you know. It feels like you're angry with me. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> or I'm feeling right? angry to what you said. You know, okay. I just need a minute to think about why I'm feeling angry and not just put it on you. 
Okay, so let's back track. So, I love you like I was a swing of fish. Was I? <laughs> swing of fish, that's what I heard. I love you like I was a swing of fish. Oh, like thank a, you. I mean, the fish? <laughs> what yeah. is that? I've never heard that one. That's me a lot, I guess, because fish love to swim. Like a water they have to do it or they die. Fish. I love you like oh, I was a swing of fish. I guess the fish love the water? <laughs> yeah, they do love the water. I, I uh, hope so, you know? <laughs> no, so, that was my bad joke. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, Bring those dad jokes energy here. <laughs> question. What's up with uh, ladies and this compatibility stuff, man? Because I don't think we still answer that question. Mm, yeah, yeah. Back to that. Um, I was to get that. Stop. Yeah, a lot of things come to my head. One, I feel like I hear people say that and they have no idea what that means. They're just saying <laughs> it like, oh, we're just not compatible. You know, like the cop out option, like just not compatible. Right. You know, like sometimes I feel like that's just something we're saying. Um, but again, it just when people are saying that, especially when you get so far into a relationship, like it really says to me, like you did not ask the right types of questions. Like you're not paying attention to your partner. How do you get like years into a relationship and be like, actually, we're not compatible. Like that right. makes me feel like maybe you don't know what you need in a relationship or what you really value and what's actually important. You're just sort of like making a list of things that could be nice. And then right. you're like, oh, actually what matters to me is this thing. And actually you don't have that thing at all. So, but then right. we just be honest, like, Hey, you know, like I really value being an independent person and you want to be with somebody who wants to be, you want to be like more submissive, I suppose, or like play this, right. this type of role. And I don't, we're not going to align. We're not going to be compatible. Like, but again, right. like ask the right questions. Like if that's the type of life you want, you got to speak up and say it. Like we got to stop selling ourselves. Like we're, we're stuck right. in this like place where it's like, I'm so great and I'm so wonderful. And like, I have no flaws, obviously. <laughs> so right. just like say what you want. Like, Hey, you know, like I want some kids, you know, this is the type of life I want to live. Like if you're down, great. Like let's talk more about it. If you're not, then let's not waste each other's time because we're going to end up hurting each other in the end. Why are there no more women like you, Janine, is my question. <laughs> I mean, I tell the women, I'm like out like, here. Like, I'm in a dozen, and you know, please <laughs> say it loud and clear for them to hear. Cause, yeah, because I don't right. like it. When it I comes, wasn't, uh, I, I, when it comes from a guy to go and say something different, it's gonna be like, oh, as a guy, obviously they're gonna say that. But I'm mm-hmm. hearing from you, it's just music to my yeah, ears. That's, that's yeah, what I, that's what we just why gotta I don't be like. more straight. This is a thing that women could take from men. Like men are pretty straight to each other. That's what I've noticed about like my interactions with men as I like right. you say the shit that you mean to your friends you're never like sugarcoating it like women right. were kind of like notorious for being like passive aggressive or like not to, yeah. again not all women I don't want to generalize or stereotype well, a lot of women. I a lot. see a lot of women doing this and I'm like oh I really wish you wouldn't do that like just say how you're feeling right. so that we can talk about it. not in like an aggressive attack in a way like again you're the worst I hate you you never do the things right. I want you to do like that's no. not going to get us anywhere. But it's like, hey, I want this thing. And like, not be ashamed that I want it. Like, right. there's nothing wrong with wanting stuff. What is wrong for me is like wanting stuff and not saying and then expecting this person to be this thing and then them right. disappointing you because they don't know that that's an expectation. They don't know you didn't want that. They don't even know that matters. That might not matter to them. Like, you're just right. leaving the space to get so cluttered with confusion. Like, just say it straight. I want this thing. If you don't right. want that, cool. There's nothing wrong about you for not wanting it. We just don't want the same thing. That's right. Are today's men pussies? Huh? Hmm. I don't know that I want to call them that. Do I think <laughs> that they've acted <laughs> better in life. ways it's that I me. don't think are very attractive? Yes. I've definitely seen men act in ways that it looks like they had no mamas to raise them because you just wouldn't, ne- we just shouldn't treat people I, this I, way. I but sorry, no, now that you say that. Oh. Now, now I just want one example. <laughs> just like you've clearly <laughs> never I, been in a club with drunk be- men who just. Like you want to talk about women being entitled. Sometimes men just like you're pretty. So clearly I'm entitled to touch you. Clearly I'm entitled to like oh, violate your space right. and try, like, make you oh, feel unsafe. Like, like, but that's to me, I don't want to say that they're like pussies. I just think that we are trapped between the people that we were and the people that we're becoming. So like we were in these roles where we were this person and now it's so unclear. Like, you know, like now I can be anything. Now I can have any role. Now I can fit in any place. And like, right. we're still just trying to figure it out. So I think, you know, like we're just not always doing the best job. And sometimes right. uh, men are just showing up in ways that, you know, 
do not make them look like they're a person sitting in their own personal power. Just right. make them seem like they're a person who's afraid, who would rather play small, who, you know, isn't connected to the world or connected to themselves. Like, I don't, again, I don't want to shame them and make them like bad this way. It's just women are doing it too in their own way, right? It's just, it's just the way right. it shows up. It's just stand in your personal power and like start trying to understand people because here's the thing, the things men are doing, if you actually understood how a woman felt, you would never, ever do those things to her because you'd be like, wow, that feels so shitty <laughs> that someone did that to me, you know, like, hmm you don't need to be a creep. You don't need to be creepy. Like you don't need to follow women home. Like wh- do you why think are you that doing has those to things? Do, do you think that has to do with like upbringing and how men were raised? Do you think it's I like mean, maybe yeah. they didn't have a motherly figure or is it, is it, they just maybe didn't grow up with girls or grow up with female siblings or yeah. have a figure around to like show them, you know, how mm. it is to treat women. Do you think maybe that could be part of the problem? You know, I do actually notice a big difference between men who have had like sisters or really like prominent mother figures versus men who have had, who have not. Like, I do see a difference uh, in the way that they treat women, but I don't think a lot of it's about um, the dynamic between them and women, but the dynamic between men, like what we expect of men, how men should behave. Like, if you're not this way, you're sort of like less than now. Like, you're supposed to be strong and like bring home right. all the money and like make mm-hmm. all the money for her and like take care of her and like do all this stuff. Like, right. That's a lot of things to be doing. Like, you're just a person. <laughs> right. So, like, here's the thing that's why the like, gender roles can switch because, like, that's so hard on you. So, like, I'm going to be your partner and step in and help you out. Like, we're going to help each other. Like, right. I think a lot of it just stems from like them being forced to like be this type of way. And them knowing that they that's never something they're going to be able to do, then feeling like these failures. And then what are right. you going to do when you feel like a failure? You're going to like overcompensate. Like you're going to be yep. this cocky person. Like you don't want to let people see how you actually feel. Like right, how vulnerable you are. Yeah. So like this is the thing. Like men, be vulnerable. Like there's nothing I love more than when men talk to me from like a real place. Like I am never being like, wow, like you're such a pussy that you like told me how you felt. I'm like, wow, thank you for sharing how you felt today. Cause like, that was pretty courageous of you. How about a guy crying? I love it. I love when men cry. No way. Stop this. <laughs> like, I do. Like, what? I do. Like, like well, you, you think he's so in touch with his emotion that he's got to cry? I mean, like if you got to cry and you're going to let it out, great. Like, why would I want you to keep your crying? And have you ever tried to not cry? Like your body just feels disgusting. Like it's right. just, you're not supposed to be doing it. Every part of you is like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And every part of you is like, please just let me cry. Like, how about for you? Like, do it. T- how about one that cries all the time? I gets mean, all emotional. I would have a uh, hard time with that. But uh, here's oh, the thing. now you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> I personally, I personally. Of course I would. It would just depend on the frequency for me. Um, lots of women who would probably love that, though. For me personally, again, nothing wrong. Man. Just for me. <laughs> oh, is that, excuse me. And that, and this is where I was talking about the man's role. So mm-hmm. if a man's crying too much all the time, um, that's no longer attractive now. It's not that it's not attractive. It's just like, why are you doing that? Like, would it be attractive if a woman was crying all the time? No, you'd be like, why are you crying all the time? Like, please stop. Like, women do overwhelming. They do, but like, why are women crying all the time? Don't get me wrong. I'm a very emotional person, so I'm crying like all the time. This is why I couldn't be with a man who's we just be like sobbing together. Like, there'd be no tears. (laughs) Right. So like, we can't both be the criers. One of us has. Someone's gonna be the strong one, right? Someone's gotta be the strong one. (laughs) That's turns. Here's the thing, like you can be the sad one, the cry one, the one that just needs hugs that day, and I'll be the strong right. one, and we'll just take no. turns. But can you do me a favor? You got a question? Yeah. Another question. Mm-hmm. Just can you do me a favor. You're pretty. You're not on the mic. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, but oh, I don't know what you're saying. You're pretty. He's not on the mic. Do what not. I'm hearing is you're pretty. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> you. She's like, yeah, I, I get that all the time. I get it all the time. Thank you. Thank you. If she had a nickel for all the times she heard, she heard that, uh, I'd be a wealthy woman. No, just do me one favor. Very white. Just do my favor. What's that? Yeah. You're gonna cry in your life. Everyone's gonna cry in their life. Yeah. Oh, sake. Just shut up. <laughs> I just have to please what okay, say for go ahead. Fuck's sake. This guy's a poet, by the way, you know. So he mm. gets poetic with his shit right now. So mm. I'll let him do his Pause thing. for dramatic effect. <laughs> right, exactly. I'll let him do his thing. Anybody get Anybody can possibly make you cry, mm-hmm. but don't cry out of your own volition. It, it has to be you. 
It has to be your uncle. You cry when you want to cry. If a man makes you cry, you're fucked. But yeah, it's not my problem. But I'm just saying, if a man makes you cry, you're fucked. See, That's it. this is not your typical podcast. I should be giving you a heads up on that one. <laughs> right? Like, like, that made me cry and fucked. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it was like, that have definitely made me cry. <laughs> so, oh, all the men I've cried over. Like, oh no, oh, please no. If you have to cry, it's, it's, it's up on your volition. Just, 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 be, just be real. Well, don't mm. cry because somebody makes you cry. Cry because you want you want to cry. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes it can just like feel overwhelming in the moment. I think that that's where a lot of like my crying comes from. It's not even like you've said something so hurtful, so I'm crying. It's just like I'm feeling so overwhelmed because there's so much emotion right. happening for that's me that I'm like I have nothing else to do but to get it out. Yeah, right. But cry because it's out of your own choice, not because somebody else is kind of coercing you or kind of making you feel yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, if you feel like you have to cry, just cry. That's what I feel like is true. There's yeah. no, I don't know if there's like situational crying for me. Like I have definitely like cried in the middle of like a coffee shop in the grocery store. Like it's a little bit awkward for other people, but like I felt like that's what I need to do. So you got to well, let that out. I don't want it, that stuff building inside no, of me. Yes, the thing. in there. Here's the thing. I had my conversation, I have a conversation with my mom today. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know what? There's sometimes I go to a place where I just have to cry. Yeah, I think it's good. And she said, I told Oscar, why do you have to cry? Why do you have to cry? And she said, because my sons care, hmm. which is like oh. you, which, which is like females. In my case, they have to care. They have to cry for a reason. They have to. Yeah, not, I not, think we're always not, crying not, for a reason. That, that was that's a wrong, wrong, wrong phrase. They don't have to cry for a reason. They have to cry because they want to mm -hmm. do it. If you have to do it. Yeah, for is, men or women. Well, like, I think it's just yeah. more, obviously we see it in women a lot more, but if you feel like you need to cry, then you should probably yeah. just cry. Okay. Like if you feel like your muscle hurt, would you just oh, keep so, moving your muscle? <laughs> like, no, oh, you'd be like, oh, my muscle hurts me. I should sit down. So question, like, so question for you. Why would yeah. you need to cry? I don't know. I guess it like depends. Like there could be so many reasons why you feel like you need to cry. Like the situation could be really upsetting. You, you could just feel overwhelmed. You? Well, for me, like either it's like situational where something's just happening, I'm feeling out of control, that might make me cry, like I'm feeling overwhelmed, there's like too much emotion here, like that might make me cry, like I could just be like going through something heavy, like that might make me cry, I might see something that like just makes me so happy, like that might make me cry, like there's so many reasons for why I could be crying, like sometimes it's Good more enough. obvious to me than others, that's what I will say, it's like sometimes I'm like, this is why I'm crying, and sometimes I'm like, this is why I'm crying, and then like a couple hours later, I'm like, oh, actually, this is is why I'm crying. Good enough. You know? <laughs> awesome, Janine. I want to thank you. First bump. Thank you again Fist for bumps. <laughs> um, so any last Great words bumps. for <laughs> any last words for our listeners out there? Uh anything you want to share? Any motivation, inspirational mm. thing that you want to say to them? Yeah, okay. Final thoughts. Um, I always just want to say to people, like, keep your energy high, you know, every day you are responsible for your own well being, like nobody is here to make you feel better to, you know, to light up your life, you got to be the light in your life. And that's the biggest thing that we have control over, like when nothing else is going your way, when you feel like all your chips are down, like you can always help yourself out, you can always like try to put yourself in a better mood, try to be a better person, try to learn, try to grow, like, we have so much that's in our control. Like, don't waste that. Don't get caught up in all the other things that don't matter. Like, focus on yourself. Try to bring good energy to you. Try to bring good energy to other people. And, like, always look around and watch how that's prospering in your life. Because I, I truly believe that everything you're putting out is always coming back. It's just not coming back on the timeline that you want to see it in. So, you know, awesome. keep make sure you're just being a good person out here because we need good. more good people. <laughs> we certainly do. And, and Jane, where can people uh, get in touch with you if they ever want to like check out your work or, you know, reach out to you, have a chit chat. Do, do you have a uh, social media? Website? Yeah, I definitely have nature? some social media. So uh, yeah, if you want to check out my makeup looks, if you want to hear some more, inspired in quotes if you just want to have a little laugh session you need someone to call with chit chat you know text yeah. dial 6600 <laughs> um yeah you can reach me at uh, nene.antonia so n-e-n-e -E dot antonia 
that's my social media. I would love to hear more about you. Uh, and I love to hear people's stories. So definitely don't be afraid to slide into the DM. Website. Yeah, Instagram. That's Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Awesome. So y'all please check out her page. That's Nene at Antonia. Is that right? Dot Antonia. Dot. Nene dot Antonia. Yes. All right. Make sure you check out Janine Patrick. It's been a pleasure, Janine. I thank you uh, for joining us on the show. You Just as long as you take negative criticism, if you can. She does. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the feedback. Right. Well, I, I, I used to make clothes before, so yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> so yeah. Any final words, EK? Don't stop learning. Don't stop learning. Mm, awesome. And like I always say, be kind to one another. Don't do what I'll do. And I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>